Hello and welcome back folks. If you're the owner of a G-Shock that comes with an MIP display, such as the GBX100 or the GBD200, I'll show you how to access some hidden menus that are not in the manual. These menus are kept hidden because they're used by the factory before the watches are shipped. It's worth you knowing about them as well because you can use them to check that your watch is working as it should and to diagnose any problems. I'll demonstrate how you can access these hidden menus on my GBX100, but the same method applies to the GBD200. For ease of reference, I'll label the buttons A, B, C and D so that you'll know which buttons to press. To start off with, you need to be on the right screen, and that screen is the home time screen, the one with the big numbers. As far as I know, you can't access the menus if you start off from a different screen. To get there, just press button A a few times. To unlock the menu, press and hold down button A, then press and hold down button C, then press button D. And here we are, this is the hidden menu. Like I said before, these menus are not in the manual, so I don't know what they all mean, but I do know about the important diagnostic ones. And now let's go through them. To scroll up and down the menu, use buttons A and C. To enter into them, press button B, and to exit the menu, press button D. If you want to exit from this hidden diagnostic menu at any time and you want to go back to normal operation, press button D a few times. The first menu item says basic and if we enter into that, the word Hodot appears. Hodot roughly translates to just enough. It's also a philosophical foundation that appears in the design of the Casio F91W and you can watch a video on that by clicking on the top right corner. Next is ID check, which doesn't seem to do very much. Next is MIP, and entering this turns on all the pixels on the MIP display. I can think of a very good reason why this might be useful. Can you? Next is test ver and entering this displays what I presume is some sort of internal testing code. Next is Bluetooth. Selecting this menu item shows the frequency of the Bluetooth the watch is using. Time adjust doesn't seem to do much in this menu. T observer must again be some sort of internal process. The same again for dev AD. Vibration is used to test out the vibration notification feature of the watch. T 
Tilt is used to test out the tilt sensor built into the watch. The numbers 8888 should disappear when the watch is flat and reappear when it's vertical. The sensor menu tests out the built-in accelerometer. This is used for tracking your sports activities and step counts. As you can see, my step count for today is zero. This is because I'm currently wearing the small but mighty F94W. The battery menu shows the current performance of the battery, which incidentally is a CR2032. The font menu is presumably used for updating the font used on the display. I tried updating it. No luck with updating the font, even though the watch was connected to my phone. The ver menu shows the various codes for the software in the watch, which aren't important to us so we'll skip over that. Next is the menu for the demo, and turning that on shows a nice welcome screen, but to be honest, I was expecting a little more. To exit the demo screen you need to hold down button D for a few seconds. The final menu shows the word Shimuke. If anyone is fluent in Japanese, please let me know what it means. When selecting this it shows a few cities, but other than that it doesn't seem to serve much function. And here's a quick scroll through of the menu items again. Thanks for watching folks, I hope that you found this video useful and I'll catch you in the next video.